And then just want to do a quick introduction to Schoolhouse Connection for folks who may not be familiar with us. We are a national organization that works to overcome homelessness through education. We partner with a variety of folks in the field to provide strategic advocacy and practical assistance. And we have a website with a variety of resources, including information on our federal and state policy advocacy. We have a Q&A from our inbox, which is very popular. And so if you do find yourself with any bikini vento related questions, uh, we encourage you to uh, check out our Q&A from our inbox because it is very likely we have answered that question for somebody else. Of course, we host webinars and uh, post implementation tools to our website to help you and your work throughout the school year. And we have a youth leadership and scholarship program where we not only support our young scholars with uh, case management, but also financial assistance through our scholarship. So definitely encourage you to share that with your network um, as that application opens up in January. And again, I know we have a lovely discussion today, but I wanna just start with a couple of um, just background slides, share some federal guidance around store cards as they relate to American Rescue Plan, Homeless Children and Youth Funds, also known as ARP HCY funds. So back in September of 2023, uh, the US Department of Education published a Dear Colleague letter that specifically names store cards, gas cards, and prepaid debit cards as allowable uses of ARP HCY funds. In that uh, Dear Colleague letter, they also specifically name this as a strategy to reduce chronic absenteeism. So uh, really, really important to think about if, if students and families cannot meet their basic needs, they will likely not be able to participate fully or attend school. And so um, the Dear Colleague letter also mentions uh, some language around modifying administrative procedures and really encourages local and state educational agencies to think about modifying any administrative procedures to really get that funding spent uh, before the obligation deadline, which I will talk about in a couple of slides. But again, if you haven't seen that language, we encourage you to share it because we are getting really, really close to that federal deadline for obligating our HCY funds. And then the other thing I will just highlight here is that the U.S. Department of Education does encourage local and state educational agencies to implement strong internal controls to track the purchase and distribution of any of these store cards. And there, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, the Dear Colleague letter specifically names uh, prepaid store cards, debit cards, and gas cards as a strategy to reduce chronic absenteeism. But we know from districts across the country that there are a variety of um, additional benefits of providing these cards. So um, again, just have, helping family access those basic needs can go a really long way, not only in helping their overall attendance and participation in school, but also just building that trusting relationship with the district. And so when a family knows that they're able to um, meet with a McKinney Mental Liaison and get those needs met, it can really build a relationship of trust. And I know that when I say store cards, prepaid debit cards, often folks will think about uh, things like a store, store cards to major retailers or grocery stores, but we have actually heard of some other creative solutions that districts have come, uh, come up with to meet these needs. So I will just highlight a couple that we think are really uh, creative. One is store cards to thrift stores. So thinking specifically about, uh, I had a liaison specifically tell me that it was a little bit challenging when families, students and families had to go to a donation closet. And so it felt a little bit like they were not like every other student. And so being able to provide them a store card where they can go and pick out clothing that they need um, really helped them with that sense of autonomy. So just something to think about there. Uh, gas cards are another really popular one that many LEAs have leveraged. So thinking about if there are any students who are using their own vehicles for transportation, um, there are these gas cards that are used specifically for fuel. So again, if safeguarding is a concern as well, um, these store cards can only be purchased for uh, fuel. Store cards for transportation in the form of bus passes or bus tokens or anything like that are also um, a form in which LEAs have been able to leverage them. And then the last one I'll highlight is just store cards for any kind of personal care. So thinking about access to laundromats, whether that's to purchase the actual supplies to do a load of laundry, or partnering with local laundromats to actually uh, be able to use that facility. We've also heard of using them for haircuts and other kind of personal care services that students may need um, to meet their basic needs. And then I will just highlight a quick example here as well. So 
we have heard from many LEAs that one of the challenges, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, is just the safeguarding. So knowing that sometimes district leadership or school business officers may have concerns around uh, families using the store cards for things that may not be allowable. However, there are major retailers like the one we have named right here that does provide charitable store cards. And so these specifically say that they are not allowable for any of these items um, and they can be purchased in a bulk order. So again, uh, might alleviate some capacity, but we encourage you all to take a look at this um, and work with your school business office to determine if this would be an option for you. And then I'm getting really close to um, my end of my slides here, but I do just want to highlight um, this RHCY timeline reminder because we have gotten many questions about the timeline, the differences between obligation and liquidation. And so I will just start by saying that the federal deadline for obligating RHCY funds is September 30th, 2024. And so uh, the US Department of Education has stated that states may not limit the period in which RHCY funds are available. So this is true. Um, in every state. And to obligate just means that the funds have been committed to an allowable use. And so, for example, if you are in a district who is thinking about partnering with a community-based organization to help with the purchasing or distribution of store cards, um, they would, there would need to be a written binding contract signed by September 30th, 2024, for that uh, those funds to be considered obligated. And then um, January 28th, 2025 is the federal deadline for liquidating funds. And again, I will just say here that um, the period of liquidation can be different based on your state. And so this is just because states may have different fiscal deadlines. So we do encourage you to check with your McKinney-Vento state coordinator if you're not sure what that liquidation period is for you. And you may have heard um, that the U.S. Department of Education did announce a process in which states can apply for extended liquidation that would extend that liquidation period up until March 30th, 2026. Again, we encourage you to check with your McKinney-Vento state coordinator if you're, if you're to determine if your state will be applying for extended liquidation. So again, something to just keep in mind as you're thinking about um, all the awesome things you can do with our HCY funds. And then the last piece that I will cover here is just um, some recent clarifications that we got from the U.S. Department of Education back in July. And so the U.S. Department of Education did issue some guidance that stated that store cards, prepaid debit cards, and gas cards may be used after the liquidation deadline. So again, that federal deadline is September 30th, 2024. And in the case that your state is going to pursue extended liquidation, that liquidation deadline would extend through March 2026. Um, there are some parameters for this. So again, we encourage you to just check out the federal guidance, but essentially it states that um, LEAs should be mindful about the amount of store cards that they are purchasing. One strategy is to just take into account recent homelessness identification trends. So if you know that your district has identified 2%, has a 2% increase of identified students every year, you might want to think about that as you're thinking about purchasing store cards in the beginning of the school year. And of course, we encourage, or the guidance does encourage districts to implement any strong internal controls. And we'll talk a little bit about that today as well. Okay, and with that, I am going to go ahead and kick us off with our panel discussion. I am going to go ahead and just stop sharing my screen. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kick us off um, with an introduction. So Jessica, I would love to start with you if you could just uh, introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Tremble. I'm the supervisor of the counseling services and, uh, and student services in Clifton, New Jersey. Um, with that being said, um, within my responsibility is also the McKinney Vento liaison as well. Thank you so much, Jessica. So I will just kick us off with our first question, which is if you could just describe how your LEA was arrived to the decision to purchase store cards and just kind of what considerations you took to come to that decision. Sure. Um, we were really fortunate that our district received a large amount of funds. And so with that being said, we really wanted to look back and see where we could improve as a district to help our students and better support them. Um, so with that being said, one was um, the gift cards and how can we provide continual care of whether it's food, clothing, and gas. And that was something that came up during conversation 
when looking at what the, um, the families needed as well as what we were able to provide to the families. So it was kind of having that conversation with our families and, and seeing what they needed and then being able to purchase them and then provide that to them. Thank you. Um, yes, we've heard a lot of districts say that they were able to either have conversations with families or issue surveys. And so it's really helpful to hear that you were doing something very similar and kind of talking to families first. Um, the other question that I have for you is just would love to hear a little bit about how your district actually purchases the store cards and don't be shy. And if you want to name names and tell us who those vendors are, we would love to hear that. Sure. So I will say I'm beyond fortunate. I have an incredible assistant superintendent, uh, Mr. Ahmed Shahada. Um, and so we really worked closely together in figuring out the best local resources that have the store cards and how we could work with them. Um, so when when doing our research, we reached out to our local stores, um, one being Target, a Walmart, and then a food store shop, right? Um, just to see their process, what we would be able to do, how we could work with them. Um, and so after all of the communication, we ended up selecting our partnership with our food store shop, right? Um, so with that being said, when I would meet with families, I would see what type of supports they needed and then purchase the gift cards at ShopRite. Um, it was helpful because we had that partnership and that collaboration. We would make a phone call to ShopRite and just let them know that we were on our way. I would kind of have a list of what I needed to purchase, whether it was food, clothing, et cetera. Um, and then we had a check. So our business office was able to produce a check. And so that way I kind of already planned out what I needed to purchase and then had the funds available to purchase the gift cards. That's super helpful. I like the fact that you partnered with, I'm, I should just say, I'm an East Coast native, so I feel like the shop right really touches my heart. But anyway, it's really great that you were able to kind of set up a process so that you could meet with them and it would be smoother. That's great to hear. Um, and then we'd love to hear a little bit, if you're open to it, just to tell us a little bit about how your district tracks store cards and just specifically walk us through any tools you use, um, partnerships with different offices in your district, and just would love to hear a little bit about that. So I will be honest, Mr. Shahada is incredible with Excel spreadsheets and has, has created like this immaculate spreadsheet that um, there's different components to it. So when I purchase certain gift cards, whether it's for food, clothing, gas, it's broken down by the amount as well as the type of store. So we purchase different clothing stores. You know, younger kids might prefer to shop at Old Navy while older kids might have a preference. So I try to also support the students in that nature too. Um, and so he created a spreadsheet that broke down what gift cards I purchased in what quantities, as well as linking it to an overall Excel sheet. So when I do purchase gift cards, that's entered, let's say on spreadsheet one, and then it links to spreadsheet two. So when I do give it to a family, if they need shop rate, or a gas or clothing gift card, then I'm able to kind of like deduct from the spreadsheet and then it all balances out. It's all connected and circles back to the other spreadsheet. So it reduces the number of what we have. So then I can make sure that I've utilized all the, the gift cards that I've purchased. Um, and then it also keeps track of like what the families are really in need of. So if they really needed food, then I can kind of keep track of, okay, our families are definitely in need for food or if they need clothing, it kind of helps organize um, that component. With that being said, there's also um, an area where I can keep track of not only what families receive the gift cards, um, but then it's linked to our um, formal letter that we give them. And so every time when they do collect a gift card, I do give them a formal letter. And then on the letter, it does have the type of gift card and the amount. Um, and then that way our families are able to sign off on it. They get a copy and that way we're able to track as well. And they have record of what we've provided to them throughout the year. Thank you so much for sharing that. I have a couple of follow-up questions if that's okay. One is just We've heard from some districts, it can be a little bit challenging, obviously, managing all the spreadsheets. So we'd love to hear, like, did you come up with a timeline with your school business office of how often you are updating that spreadsheet? Um, and if you could just walk us through that process a little bit more. So anytime that we do purchase a gift card, then it's automatically uploaded to the spreadsheet. Um, and usually I purchase them when I meet with a family that that's in need. So 
I try to um, have communication with the families at least once a month to see where they're at and what they're in need of. Um, so I would say approximately once a month. Sometimes family are in needs of additional items and sometimes they're not. So it changes monthly, but I do try to update the, the spreadsheet once a month with the updated gift cards and then who's receiving the gift cards. Thank you. And then I really like that piece that you shared about, like, not only was it beneficial for tracking purposes, but also to identify needs. And so tracking, okay, I'm spending more money on this type of gift card and not this one. So curious um, what you found as you were kind of going through the process. And, and if there were more gift cards that you've, or store cards that you found that you used, it's just talking a little bit about that piece. So I think the ShopRite, I also purchased ShopRite gift cards, and I think that has been most helpful. Um, because not only can you buy food, but if you need hygiene products, laundry detergent, and things of that nature, our families were able to purchase it at ShopRite as well. And so we have seen a huge amount of need for the ShopRite gift cards, um, but clothing falls shortly behind. I've also purchased gas, gas gift cards for um, our families if we are setting up transportation. Sometimes, unfortunately, it takes a few days or it can take up to a week, depending on where the student is traveling from. So we will reimburse the, the family for gas to make sure that they can transport the student. And so that's been our least that we have given out. And our, our, our top is definitely our food gift cards, whether it's for ShopRite, or I also have done gift cards for local food locations in the town in case um, a parent can't drive to shop right and they need to just order something from Domino's or something of that nature. Thank you, that's super helpful. Um, so we talked a little bit about actually purchasing and tracking. And so another question that comes up very frequently is just capacity to distribute store cards. So we'd love to hear um, how your district is distributing those store cards. And again, if you've partnered with anyone to kind of make that process a little bit easier. So it's, it's all me. So when I meet with the families, I see what they're in need of. Um, and then at that point, I will set up a time where I'm going to purchase the gift cards and they do come back um, because that way we kind of go over what gift cards I've given them. They've received the formal letter. They sign off on the letter. Um, and there's times too where if they do need food at ShopRite, sometimes most of the time, like I might place the order online um, and then they can just go pick up the order or same thing with clothing. I know sometimes um, making sure that the families are utilizing the gift cards in the appropriate way. And so a lot of times too, they need the assistance to use the gift card to order something online. They may not have computer access. So I just do it here for them. And then they either will pick it up at the store and or have it delivered to where they're located. So I'm usually responsible for the handoff of all the gift cards though. Thank you for sharing that. And also kudos to you for managing it all. <laughs> um, so I, I wanna just talk a little bit here around um, internal controls. And so obviously you talked a little bit about kind of having this agreement form that families sign. And so does your district require families to provide receipts of the things that they have purchased or any kind of other process to just kind of make sure that families are purchasing allowable items? So we don't require the receipts. A lot of times, like I mentioned before, I do order with them, whether it's regarding the food and or um, clothing. Um, if they're able to send me a picture of the receipt, um, sometimes they don't have transportation, so it's difficult for them to come back, then they will. And then I will connect all of the receipts that they do have or I have to their um, formal letter. So I do try to keep track as best as I can. Um, but a lot of times too, we order when they're in my office. Yeah, I think we've seen that one a lot with with liaisons, just kind of, we've seen some folks order, for example, Amazon gift cards, and then they fill everything up in the order um, in the shopping carts for them. So that's super helpful. Um, thank you for sharing that. And so my final question here is just, would love to hear a little bit about, we know that RPHCY funds are coming to an end, unfortunately. And so do you have any plans for how you, um, intend on purchasing store cards after our BHCY funds are finished. 
So we've thought about um, looking for additional grants that could support our students and our families and other funds that we do receive um, through the state. Um, we're, we are hoping that we will definitely meet with our families in the beginning of the school year and purchase as much gift cards as we can with anticipation of, let's just say, um, during a break that we might have. So in New Jersey, we have teacher convention where the school is closed for two days. And so that way we can at least prepare that maybe we will provide ShopRite gift cards to make sure that the students are being fed during those two days where the school is closed. So we kind of prepped in that regard. Um, long term, we're just hoping to find other community resources. Um, we've partnered with our community really well, the health department, and really have worked closely with them. So it's it's really just looking for the partnership and then um, finding ways to find additional funding to continue with purchasing the gift cards. Thank you. Uh, well, I want to just say really quickly, I see everyone's questions coming in and we are going to get to those really quickly, but I want to just stay on this piece right here because I think it's super helpful. But you mentioned kind of partnering with your local health department and so curious to hear um, how that's how that happened and kind of how you imagine that um, to flourish after our big CY funds. Yeah, so um, we've partnered in different avenues um, and one actually um, separate from the gift cards, but um, our district um, recognizes Homelessness and Hunger Awareness Week. And so during that time, we do different fundraisers throughout the week. Um, and we have collected, um, whether it's food and items for our um, Code Blue Warming Center that's in town. And so we have kind of like created that partnership where we have provided that we have hosted things within our district to provide for the department. And then that way too, we have our local food pantries and whatnot that we've partnered with um, to kind of help support. So let's say if I'm not able to, not now, but in the future, if I don't have a gift card, at least we've created these partnerships with local food pantries and our Clifton Health Department that will hopefully be able to still help support us, support our families. Thank you. I, I think one of my favorite things about all of the RPTY webinars and just talking to liaisons is hearing, you may not be able to do this, but the partnerships that we were able to do, like launch because of this have just been long lasting. So that's really great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, so I see that there are several, several questions in here. So I'm going to just start kicking us off and answering some of these. Um, so the first one that I will go to is just around, I'm sorry, there's a lot of questions in here. Give me one second. Okay, I see someone who would ask if they can purchase Visa prepaid cards. So again, uh, prepaid debit cards are an allowable use of RPHCY funds. But again, we would just encourage you to work with your school business office and determine what that might look like for your district. So again, it's kind of Jessica mentioned um, in their district, they're using a different kind of way to purchase store cards. So it just kind of depends on what your district is interested in doing and what the internal control might look like. And then I'm seeing another question around um, hotels.com gift cards and if those can be used before the September deadline. So I wanna just make a quick plug here. We talked about this in another webinar, but I will talk about it here, which is just that there are different, different federal guidelines for hotel stays. And so those funds aren't considered obligated until someone has actually used that hotel stay. And so in this case, even if you purchase the store card, the, that will not be considered obligated because the family won't stay in the hotel until they use that gift card. So unfortunately, this uh, hotels.com or any kind of hotel provider gift cards would not be able to be used after the September obligation deadline. Okay. Um, I am seeing another question about Title I Part 8 homeless set-aside funds and if they can be utilized for the same items that I've mentioned today. So there are some items that are allowable with RPH, um, that are allowable with RBHCY funds that are allowable with Title I Part 8 funds. I will just preview that uh, we at 12 Connection are thinking about this, and so you may see something come from us that more clearly talks about this. But the one thing that I will just say that we do know is that all allowable uses of ARPHCY funds will continue with EHCY funds. So any McKinney-Vento subgrant funds, you can continue to um, fund anything that you use ARPHCY fund for. So just something to keep in mind as you're thinking about that sustainability piece. 
And then I'm seeing another question here. Um, I'm trying to find some that Jessica can help out with too. <laughs> and everyone just wants your spreadsheets, Jessica. <laughs> um, let's see, there is one here about if we purchase store cards, can we only purchase them distribute them to families or could our staff use them to purchase items for families? So again, I think this gets at a little bit of what we were just talking about. So yes, if you, as the McKinney Vento Liaison purchases the store cards, you could have families come in um, and purchase those things with them. I know that you talked about this a little bit, Jessica, but curious if you wanna just kind of recap on anything that you wanna to add to this piece here. So I think it's important just to make sure that the funds that are being used are for our families that are that qualify as um, McKinney Vento families. And so I think sometimes as long as your staff members are being mindful and they're aware of who is displaced and who needs who's who needs these services and supports, I think that would be helpful. My only concern would be providing or purchasing something from a gift card and providing it to students who might not qualify and then they don't fall under um, that umbrella. Definitely a great idea though. Um, I think you just have to be mindful to make sure that the students do qualify. That's a really good point. Um, we at Schools Connection always encourage training all staff members on the rights of students experiencing homelessness. Um, we have seen some districts who have been able to work with school social workers, for example, who are really well informed about the needs of students experiencing homelessness. So again, just thinking about who that person would be and what training they've received. So thank you for elevating that, Jessica. Um, trying to see which other ones here we can get to. Um, unless the contract is Okay, I'm seeing a question here about contracted services. There's a couple of questions, so I will just kind of address this as a whole. But um, so generally speaking, um, if you are a district who is going to enter a contract with a community-based organization, say in this case, to help with the uh, distribution or purchasing of supplies or store cards or some other thing, um, that contract needs to be signed by September 30th, 2024. So again, a written binding contract needs to be signed, processed, and then those funds will be considered obligated. The period of performance for those services may continue after the uh, obligation period. So again, depending on what that liquidation period is for you. So for example, I know that um, some states have shorter obligation uh, liquidation periods. So if that deadline is say October, then it may continue through October. But again, we would just encourage you to double check with your McKinney Vento state coordinator to determine uh, what that period of liquidation is. But yes, a contracted service may continue past um, the obligation deadline and into throughout the liquidation period. Can I add to that? Is that okay? Yes, yes. So I mentioned last year, um, we did partner um, with a mental health agency and we used the funds for um, a clinician who works solely just with our McKinney Vento students, which was absolutely incredible. So if you are thinking of finding someone to contract and you're able to financially afford having a clinician, I think it was really important for our students. Granted, our district has a lot of counselors and social workers, um, but I think a lot of times that what we've seen is they were coming um, to us, not about being displaced, but more about the reason that they got to that point, whether it was a house fire, domestic violence, there's a lot of things that have transpired and it was really important to them to talk it out. And I think that was one of our in addition to the gift cards, it was a very successful contract that we had to make sure that right when the student did qualify as a McKinney Vento student, that we linked them to those counseling services. So it was definitely a great contract to, to have. So just food for thought. Thank you, Jessica. Yes, there, there's a variety of services that we have seen have been so beneficial. And so definitely encourage you to consider that option if it's something that uh, might benefit you and your students and you still have some outstanding funds. And then um, I am seeing a lot of questions in here related to just the spreadsheet, um, the letter that you give families. And so you are all in luck because Jessica has already been so gracious enough to share that with us in the past. And so if you are looking for some of that, 
I will just say that in our RPHCY webpage, um, which I see my colleagues have already shared, but I will share in there as well, um, we do have sample MOUs and the actual spreadsheet that Jessica is using in her district um, to track the store cards. So again, you can download them and then you can customize them for the needs of your district. So definitely encourage you to check that out if you haven't already. Um, okay, let me see which other ones in here. Not gotten to. Okay, I'm seeing a question around fuel cards. If we purchase all fuel cards before 930, 20, 930.24, can we continue to provide them to families after 930.24? Does this anyone know if Arizona has different guidelines around this? Okay, yeah, so again, earlier, similar to what I mentioned earlier, um, if, those per if those store cards are purchased by September 30th, 2024, they may continue to be used um, after the liquidation period. Um, I would double check with Arizona and the McKinney Vental State Coordinator. I know that, again, states are issuing their own guidance, and so encourage you to just double check with them about that piece as well. Okay, okay I see another question about um, if districts are required to ask families for receipts for the items they purchase using cards. So I know Jessica, you talked about this a little bit and um, you know, in, in Clifton Public Schools, it doesn't sound like there is a requirement for that receipt if they have it, great. Um, and I know that we have talked to a lot of districts at Schoolhouse Connection where there, there's different processes. And so it really kind of depends on what would make your your process with your school business office a little bit smoother, but we do encourage you to just think about your capacity. So again, do you as a McKinney Vental Liaison have the capacity to track every single receipt and what that might look like? And um, also just thinking about families and what would kind of help build that trusting relationship. Um, but I will take a pause here and I'll invite Jessica if there's anything you wanna to add to that piece there about receipts and how that worked for you. So I did find um, that asking for the receipts was difficult, which I kind of switched gears and um, ordered the items with the families in front of me. That way I was able to, I had the order and I technically had the receipt with me and was able to attach it to the letter. So um, again, like I mentioned before, a lot of our families sometimes don't have transportation, so they couldn't pick up, they couldn't go to ShopRite or they couldn't go to the a clothing store to pick up items. So sometimes it was easier for them just to order the items with me and I could navigate the computer. And then that way things were ordered, they would be able to, to go back home and, and be home for the delivery, whether it was food or clothing. And then benefit, I had the receipt of what was purchased with those gift cards. Um, the only receipt that I never received was a gas gift card because um, they would just use it and that was it. Um, but what we do see is where the family is living and kind of the commute to where the student needed to attend school and kind of gauged on the mileage and how much it would cost um, for gas for them for the week. And we would go based on week. Um, usually our transportation is set, set up within five days. So we kind of just focused on the week of gas gift cards for our families too. Thank you for elaborating on that piece. Um, and I'm seeing another question in here about gift cards with restrictions, like the Walmart charitable card based on the store. If so, do we know which other vendors have those policies? So yes, I think there are a couple of major retailers. They're not coming to my mind right now, but I know there are a couple that do have um, kind of, again, on the actual physical card, it will say, certain items are not allowable. So that again can calm some, some concerns if there's any district concerns about purchasing unallowable use, uh, unallowable items. The other thing that I will share is that I have heard from many liaisons that it's helpful to just purchase them for vendors that don't carry those items in the first place. So again, thinking about thrift stores or some other major retailers that don't have those items, that's another way to kind of um, combat that. Um, curious if there's anything you want to add there, Jessica, as well, if safeguards ever came up as a conversation. In regard to gift cards, um, we kind of looked at the stores that were local and stuck with those. So before I mentioned Old Navy, um, 
before we did partner with a hotel and district um, and there was an old Navy right there. And there was also um, one of our, I think a subway was local too. So if a family did need to stay at the hotel for a week or whatever point, that way they had clothing as well as food available close to them. Um, so we kind of looked at the resources that were local in the community. And I focused on purchasing gift cards for those stores per se. Great, thank you. Um, okay, I think that we are coming to uh, somewhat of an end here. I see one question that I haven't addressed yet, which is just about activation fees. So determining whether activation fees attached to a visa card is allowable. This is a new one. I have not heard this one before. And so again, I would just encourage you to double check with your school business office about that piece there. I know they're the ones who are often filling out those budget forms. So it would be helpful to just talk to them about that as well. Um, okay. And I'll just take one quick scan. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, great. Um, so thank you all again for all of your lovely questions. Thank you, Jessica, for being here with us and just sharing all of your insights. I'm just going to wrap us up with a couple of closing slides um, before we close out today. So if I can just find my slide again. Okay. Okay, so as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we do have a uh, Slack community. And so we encourage you to continue asking those questions. So again, uh, we have a QA and a uh, from our inbox. We also have a contact form. So if you do have any outstanding questions about allowable uses or store cards or um, really anything as we reach that obligation deadline, please feel free to message us or send us a uh, something on that contact form, but you do also have this SHC community at your disposal. So we encourage you to please use it and ask each other questions because we want to hear what you all are doing as well. Um, we are available on all of the socials. So again, if you want to uh, just stay up to date with what we're working on, what we are um, what we're posting, please feel free to uh, follow us on any of the social platforms. And we also have a mailing list. And so again, encourage you all to please sign up just to get the latest information about our legislative updates, our implementation tools, and our upcoming webinars. And Anna Sophia, yeah. I'm gonna jump on. <laughs> Surprise, um, I'm no longer, <laughs> no longer lurking, but just wanna comment on some of, there was some sort of back and forth happening, happening rapid fire in the chat again about sort of obligation and what what can be done before obligation and afterwards um, which allowable uses so the clarifications document that I dropped in there a couple times has that information um, on it in terms of which uses need to be done between now and September which is largely motels and then which can continue after the extended or li the liquidation deadline which is this category of store cards uh, gas cards bus tickets etc so um, that was actually from responses to states by the U.S. Department of Education. So if you need, like, where does it say that chapter and verse, that's the document to check out. So I just wanted to pop in there at the end and emphasize that document. Thank you, Barbara. Um, so I just want to also just highlight here is our contact information if you haven't seen it already. But again, um, there is our SHC team. You can reach out to any of us with any questions about today's webinar. And of course, um, there is Jessica's information who is doing the thing. So of course you can feel free to reach out to her as well. Um, and we are so gracious that she was able to join us today. So thank you all again. I think this is my last slide. Yes. Um, thank you all again for joining us. Um, I will hang on for a little bit if there's any other questions, but if not, thank you so much and have a good afternoon. <laughs>